Hi everyone, my name is Crystal, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to talk about the four different kinds of hormone related headaches or migraines. So this is a topic that is really near and dear to my heart because I have struggled with migraines ever since I was a teenager. It was around the time that I got my first period when I started to experience some migraine headaches and I have experienced them ever since, although now that I know a lot more about them and I'm more aware of them, I take care of myself a lot better. Better, and I know what my triggers are and one of those triggers is hormones so sometimes my migraines can come cyclically and so I do a lot to take care of myself around those times but I wanted to talk about the four different times in your cycle where you might be predisposed to headaches or migraines and what you can do to prevent that. One of the biggest reasons why you might be predisposed to headaches or migraines during your menstrual cycle is because of hormone fluctuations. Now <laughs> I know like all all my videos are about different side effects of hormone fluctuations and headaches or migraines is just another side effect of hormone fluctuations and specifically estrogen fluctuations. So estrogen is a very interesting hormone. It can affect a lot of things. It does a lot of good for us, but it does fluctuate a few times during the cycle and this fluctuation can impact how we feel and it can also possibly predispose us to experiencing headaches or migraines. Now a very common time in your cycle where you may experience a migraine is during menstruation. So the first couple days of your period is a very, very common time when you might experience a migraine. And so that is due to a few different factors. The first factor is the fact that your estrogen is very low at this time. Um, right when you start your period is when your hormones are at their lowest. So estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest and that can predispose you to migraines. <laughs> Another reason why you may experience a menstrual migraine is because of prostaglandins. Now prostaglandins create this inflammatory response in your uterus so they actually help to shed your uterine lighting. So prostaglandins aren't bad, we do need them, but an overproduction can actually predispose you to having some possible issues around your body. So one thing that you might experience if you have a lot of prostaglandins is obviously pretty intense menstrual cramps. You might also experience some pain in your legs. It might radiate down to your legs or even into your back. And another thing that you might experience is a migraine. So prostaglandins can possibly trigger a migraine headache. And so these are just a few things to be aware of and I will talk about preventative tips at the end of the video because there's a lot that you can do to help decrease the amount of prostaglandins <laughs> in your body um, so you're not having like an overabundance of them and then they're not causing all of these um, things to happen. The second most common time that you might experience a migraine is actually at the end of your period. So this is called an end menstrual migraine and so an end menstrual migraine is actually triggered by low iron which makes sense because when we have our period we are losing blood which you know we lose a little bit of iron and if you are iron deficient or anemic that could potentially predispose you to struggling with menstrual migraines so we'll talk about preventative techniques for that later on in the video as well um, but there is a lot you can do for that the third time in your cycle where you may experience a migraine is around ovulation and this is because when you are ovulating your estrogen rises very very high but then as soon as you ovulate it starts to pretty much kind of just drop off um, because then your body is shifting to produce more progesterone and so this is a normal fluctuation but when your estrogen levels start to drop after ovulation that can be a pretty uncomfortable time you know some people experience some tiredness they don't really feel their best they feel a little bit low and then you could also possibly experience a migraine at that time as well and that is because estrogen has kind of gone from very high to a lot lower so the fourth type of headache that is related to your hormones is the premenstrual migraine. And so the premenstrual migraine usually happens uh, a little bit before your period or it could happen about seven days out from your period. So your premenstrual phase is usually about a week long and takes place the week before your period. So any time during that phase you could possibly experience a migraine. And so there are a few different reasons for that. The biggest reason is because again your hormones are fluctuating at this time and estrogen and progesterone are starting to drop off as your 
your period nears. Another reason why you might experience migraines in your premenstrual phase is because of stress. Stress is a huge factor for a lot of people. A lot of people hold their stress in their neck and their shoulder area and if you're very tight up there it can actually like affect your blood vessels and stuff and that can predispose you to premenstrual migraines. And of course the premenstrual phase can be a little bit stressful too. You might feel irritable, you might feel a bit annoyed, you might feel like your needs aren't being met or that your boundaries aren't being respected. It can be a very hard time. Um, there can also be a lot of symptoms that are coming up for us and then of course if we are experiencing hormone imbalance that could also predispose us to premenstrual migraines especially if um, our hormones are a little bit out of whack. So there's a lot of reasons why we might experience hormone related migraines. Those are the top four. Of course if you are experiencing migraines during your cycle and they just come at any random time it could be related to something else. There's a lot of root causes when it comes to migraines and I know for me stress is a really big one. The season change for me as well often triggers me to have like a cluster of migraine headaches and for some people food sensitivities could play a very big role in their migraines. They could be triggered by the certain foods they're eating. Migraines can also be triggered by inflammation, it can be like diet, it can be low hydration, like there's so many things you have to think about when you're experiencing headaches or migraines. But thankfully one thing that we can do is we can track our cycles and start to understand when our migraines are popping up for us and if they they do have a pattern because if they do have a pattern that can help us understand what's going on and then kind of dig a little bit deeper and if you're someone who experiences a menstrual migraine self-care is probably going to be really important for you taking a day or two at rest if you are able to when you have your period is so so important making sure that you're eating well if you do experience a lot of period pain it could be due to the prostaglandins which could be then affecting um, you and triggering migraines and so a great way to help with prostaglandins is to make sure that you are increasing your omega-3 intake omega-3s are so important omega-3s also can help reduce prostaglandin production and so it's really great to make sure that you're having ground flax seeds ground chia seeds, some walnuts, and if you are worried about your omega-3 intake or you want to just increase it, try to have some algae oil. Um, adding that into your diet is really great. There's so many plant-based omega-3 oils out there now, which is just amazing. And so taking a supplement is always a great idea and that can really help. Other foods that can help reduce inflammation would be turmeric as well as ginger. And I have a video on those foods for period pain. And so if you wanna watch that, I'll put that in the description. But um, it's a really great way of reducing overall inflammation in your body. Those foods have been known for so many years to help decrease inflammation. Another thing that is really important as well is to make sure that you're drinking lots of water. Hydration is so, so important. Now when it comes to end menstrual migraines, they are usually triggered from low iron. So what you can do is you could supplement iron in that case. Now I would highly suggest getting your iron levels tested before you supplement because there is no real reason to supplement with iron if you aren't deficient. And there's a lot of ways that you can increase iron in your diet without having to supplement. So increasing your vitamin C intake is a great way of boosting your iron absorption. And then another great thing is to make sure that you're not drinking coffee or tea. Have those away from meals. So you don't want to be drinking coffee with breakfast and you don't want to be having tea with lunch or dinner. You want to make sure that those are separate because those things can easily inhibit iron absorption. Now when it comes to all of the migraines I talked about and then just migraines in general, there is a lot of things that can help. Um, one of the best things is magnesium supplementation. Taking magnesium every day, especially magnesium glycinate, is really helpful, especially if you're stressed out. Magnesium supplementation has been shown to really help just relax your muscles and everything, and also help with headaches um, and migraines. Another supplement that you could look into is taking B2, which is riboflavin. That has been shown to drastically reduce migraine attacks. And some studies have shown that it actually decreases migraine attacks by 50% in just two weeks. So that is another supplement you can research and look more into. I'm not able to give dosaging amounts in my videos, so I just want to let you guys know that these things are available, but you're going to have to do 
do your own research and talk to a healthcare provider uh, before implementing them into your routine to make sure that it's right for you. Another herb that you could talk to your healthcare provider about is feverfew. Feverfew is an amazing herb that has been known to help with migraine prevention for many, many years. And of course, a really great preventative therapy is exercise. Exercise is so, so great. It helps get your blood moving. I feel like exercise is just so underrated. Like it's so good for so many things. It doesn't have to be crazy intense. You don't have to like go to the gym and hit all the weights. Uh, just going for a walk or doing some yoga or just moving your body in a way that you love is uh, the most important way you can exercise. And then other therapies that could be really helpful would be acupuncture. That can be really helpful. Massage therapy can be really helpful because a lot of us just hold so much tension in this area which can really affect um, how often we are predisposed to migraines. Like if your neck and stuff is tight, that can affect so many things and that could actually trigger migraines. And then of course, menstrual cycle awareness is fantastic because menstrual cycle awareness allows you to learn about your body, understand your cycle, see how your hormones impact how you feel, and really help you with preventative self-care because you can discover times of your cycle where you're more predisposed to menstrual migraines and then you can use that as like a preventative self-care routine and then you can keep track of the days where you might be more susceptible to migraines and then you can do a lot of self-care. So menstrual cycle awareness is a great practice to get into. It can be really, really helpful to show you what's going on in your body and it's it's just a fantastic way of taking care of yourself. Now I don't think any migraine video would be complete without me touching on the fact that some of us just need to take medication and that's totally okay. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do, but just know that there are a lot of things you can do to also prevent um, and hopefully minimize your migraine attacks. Now I hope this video has helped you learn more about hormone related migraines. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. As always, your cycle matters so much and I'm here for you and I will see you in the next video. Bye!